Yeah. There we go. All right, so the road to becoming a pharmacist um, by me, Samina Hussein. So a lot of you, a lot of you, the initial question is, why should I do pharmacy? There's so many careers out there. You guys, you know, heard about why you should be a doctor. Well, this is why you should be a pharmacist. It's actually really similar, I think, to why you should be a doctor. Um, obviously, you're going to be helping people. I think that's the number one reason why people go into pharmacy. It's really rewarding in that sense where you're helping people, you know, um, you're always going to be around sick people, and they're always going to be really appreciative of everything you have to do for them. And the one thing um, that I think distinguishes pharmacy from medicine is that pharmacy is actually really flexible. And I'm though, like, it's, re it's a really good career, I think, for the sisters because you're not going to be on call. Um, you can have that regular 9-to-5 job if you want. If you want to be in a hospital, you can have that, you know, the crazy schedule. It's really up to you. You can work part-time. And then on top of that, even while you do that, it's enough to, you know, have a staple job and actually make a good amount of money while you're doing it. So, you know, if sisters want to have a career of their own, it's a good path to take. All right, so um, a timeline of what pharmacy looks like. So, obviously, if you got your four years of high school, and then you can do either two to four years of undergrad. It's really up to you, um, depending on how long it takes you to get all your credits done. And then the actual pharmacy school is going to be four years. And then you, um, post-pharmacy, you have two options. You can either do one or two years of residency, and I'll go into more of what that is, or you can do a one to two years of a fellowship. I know um, in medicine, it's the fellowship follows a residency. In pharmacy, a residency and a fellowship is actually two different things. All right, so starting with high school. Um, this is like kind of like I think Brother Usman had said, high school is where it starts. Um, you want to make sure you, you try to take as many science classes as you can. You know, AP Bio, AP Chemistry would probably be a really good idea. When I was in high school, I didn't take AP Chem, but I did take AP Biology, and it's a really good prerequisite to, um, to know if you like the field or not. Uh, you know, make sure you're maintaining that GPA. Uh, it's, GPA for anything, I think it's always a good cushion. Schools are always looking at what GPA you have. And then interning and volunteering. A lot of people think, you know, I'm in high school, I'm too young. But there's actually um, programs in hospitals where you can shadow a doctor. I know there's a program in a hospital in um, Pennsylvania where every Friday they have you rotate between different departments in a hospital so you can get to know if you actually like the healthcare system and then it's a really good way to decide if, if, science, is, if science is for you because I know a lot of people who have done these things and realize I really don't like this I don't like working with people I don't like you know seeing sick people all the time it can kind of become a little bit draining after a while and um, what I did as the sister said is I did a direct entry program so what this is, it's a little bit different from doing, you know, your undergrad and then going, applying to pharmacy school. It's straight out of high school. So there is, I'm not exactly sure how many programs there are in the U.S., but the one I went to was Philadelphia College of Pharmacy. And what you do is you actually apply to the pharmacy program and you get in straight from high school. So what you would do is two years undergrad and then you would automatically be into pharmacy school. It's all about try, um, staying in versus having to reapply. So, um... The good thing about this, it's a six-year straight track. The only thing is make sure you know this is what you want to do because once you're in, you're kind of stuck with it. You don't want to, you know, waste time doing it and then realizing I don't like this. Um, the awesome thing about doing a direct program is you don't have to take your PCAT. A PCAT, you know, I don't know how much you, how much you guys know about it, but it's a really daunting task. It's, it's like the MCAT. It's like one of those six-hour exams. you got to study for it. So if you do this, you don't have to take it. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I did it. Um, and also, something in high school you have to keep in mind is deadlines, deadlines. Everything after high school, you have deadlines, and there's no one going to be, um, be there to tell you, hey, listen, your deadline is coming up. You need, to, you, know, you need to push yourself. This is going to be all on you. You've got to take the responsibility for it. All right, so once um, you're finished with high school, you decide pharmacy, you know, it's a possibility. You've got college. So this is undergrad. Um, like I said before, you can do either a minimum of two to four years. Uh, you actually have the option of graduating with the bachelor's or, you know, do, your, do all the requisites you need and then you don't, you know, not graduate with anything. I highly, highly recommend graduating with the bachelor's in case pharmacy isn't what you like and at least you have something to fall back on. So, but you do have the option of just doing two years without anything. Um, and another thing is you want to make sure you maintain at least a GPA of 3.5 or above. I think that's like a, a B plus or like an A or above. Just because when you're applying to pharmacy schools, there's two things they really look at. It's your PCAT and your GPA. 
Um, they're not going to look at, you know, I mean, they look at what classes you take, but in the end, it depends on those two things. So the GPA tells them a lot, you know, whether you're a strong student, you're a strong studier. So make sure you're keeping that in mind, you're following that. And like I, um, this is going to be like a reoccurring theme, interning and getting experience. It's a really cutthroat world. I'm sure you guys know now, especially in this economy, it's really hard to get a job. So they're going to be looking at every little thing that you can. So you really want to make sure you stand out somehow. And interning and um, getting a job is really good experience. It not only tells you, um, gives you a good idea of what the field is actually like, but you, you, know, you make money um, and you get a lot of experience and you build a lot of connections too. And also, college is a time to create a support system. You know, um, I know this hasn't really have to do with pharmacy, but make sure you make friends and you're uh, you're part of the MSA there. You're part of ac extracurricular activities because you know even if they're not in the same major as you, they will become an asset later on in life when you need them for you know a favor here, a favor there. Um, and also, huge, huge thing: get to know your professors, no matter where you are, high school, college, you know, um, graduate school. Make sure you know your professors because. In the end, they're the ones that are going to be writing your recommendations letters. And those, um, I was actually just talking to a friend the other day, and she's in the position of looking at, she, she's my year, and she's in the position of looking at other people's applications. And she's like, some, some professors write, eh, this person's okay. And other professors will write, you know, this is a great student, this is someone you want. So you want to make sure you build that relationship with that professor so they do write that good stuff about you, and they do, um, you know, they do praise you. Because if you think about it, um, your scores, your GPA and your scores, they only tell you how good you are with your textbook. Uh, fields like pharmacy and medicine, it's a lot of people interaction and recommendations really tell them this person, you know, they're able to communicate, they're, they're personable and it's someone you want to work with versus, yeah, they can just make good scores. All right, so what classes to fo focus on when you're, when you're in college? So it's basically biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, um, anatomy, physiology, and math. So chemistry and organic chemistry, the two I kind of want to go over. Um, for the PCAT, they're a huge, huge deal. Um, the PCAT, a lot of that information is going to be on the PCAT. But honestly, once I got into pharmacy, once I was in pharmacy school, you barely use it. So if you feel like chemistry isn't your strong point, and same with organic chemistry, don't let that get you down. Because honestly, in phar when I was actually like through the four years pharmacy school, I probably use that very rarely, very rarely. I know a lot of people think, oh, you know, pharmacy is a lot of chemistry. Unless you actually want to make drugs, if you want to go into the research part of it, you're not going to use that. So what you're really, really, but do study it for your PCAT. Um, what you're really going to need is anatomy, physiology, math, and biology. So a lot of pharmacy is that because you have to know how the body works. And then math um, becomes a really big, um, it comes into play a lot when you're actually doing the calculations. Pharmacy is a lot of calculations, you know, um, how much medicine to give based on, you know, a person's body. I mean, it's, it's a lot to go into, but know that math is a big part of it. And anatomy and physiology, which is the body. And so depending on what college you want to go to, a lot of colleges have a pre-pharmacy track. And so they'll tell you exactly which classes you need to take, what requirements there are. And every school, every pharmacy school has its own requirement. Um, they'll tell you exactly. But basically, it's going to be these classes plus some humanities. You know, they want you to be well-rounded. So, you know, take journalism, take philosophy, take any, take all those little, I don't, I don't want to call them fluff classes, but take those classes that interest you too because they do look at that as well. And this time in your life is really a good time to decide if this is what you really want because at this point, you've got a bigger understanding of what, you know, what's, um, what's to come later on. All right, so like I said, a PCAT, if you decide to not do the direct program and you decide to do, you know, your undergrad and then go into and start applying for pharmacy schools, PCAT is going to be your best friend. So um, first thing you should know is lots of studying. It's a lot, a lot of studying. I, I didn't take it, but I have talked to people who have taken it. I've seen people who have transferred into my school who took it. And the one major theme is that it's a lot of studying, it's a lot of hard work. Um, people say they study for about two to three months, about six hours a day. And I, I talked to someone who said they did the Kaplan book inside out and they thought they would get 100 and they came out with like a 75. It's a lot of hard work. It's a hard test. Um, like I said, it's a six-hour exam. And But the main things, you, um, like I said before you want to focus on are the organic chemistry, 
chemistry, biology, pre-calc, and then anatomy and physiology. So you'll kind of see that throughout the rest of your schooling. And like I said, um, when you do take your PCAT, it comes, it, the way they score it is a percentile range. So I think the score is, I don't even know, but I think it's like between 200 and 800. But they don't look at your actual score. They look at the percentile. So they grade you based on how everyone else is doing too. So a minimum you want to get a 70. But honestly, a 70 isn't going to get you far at all. An 85 to a 90 percentile is what's really going to be like, okay, this person is um, what we're looking for. I know Maryland, um, University of Maryland College of Pharmacy, they look for 85 to 90 percent. And it, it's not a joke to get that, so you really have to work hard on that. But it's rewarding. <coughs> okay, so once you're in pharmacy school, what to expect? Um, again, it's a lot like med school. It's going to take a lot of focus and a lot of hard work. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Uh, it takes a lot of commitment just because you're going to be dealing with the material, material a lot. It's a lot of science, so make sure you like science. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, and most of the time, you're going to be learning about the body system. You're going to be learning about all the disease states and how that affects your body. Because um, whereas the doctor is fixing the body, what we're doing is we're, we're trying to figure out what is going to change that body to make it better. So you have to know how the body works first. And it's going to be a lot of drugs. I'm sure you guys know there's, there's a lot of drugs out there. So be prepared to you know, get into a lot of memorization, um, just knowing what the drug is, what it's for. And then you have to actually know how to use it, too. Um, also, a lot, of, a lot of pharmacy schools are different in the way they're structured, but most pharmacy schools have a lot of clinical and hands-on experience. So while you're in school, they'll be giving you time to, you know, go to a hospital. They'll actually make you. It's not a choice, but they'll make you go to a hospital, shadow the residents there, shadow the doctor, shadow the pharmacist. Uh, when I was in school, we had a lot of, you know, you be the patient, I'll be the doctor. Let's try to, you know, let's do mock um, just just mock trialing that. And then it's a lot of lab work. You know, you learn how to give immunizations. You learn how to counsel people on their drugs. You learn how to take your blood pressure, do all those tests. And, it, and like I said, it's a lot of communication, so you, you're you going to need to know how to talk to a, a wide range of people. So you're going to be talking to doctors, healthcare professionals. You're going to be talking to layman people. You're going to have to know how to talk, you know, on a fifth grade level. Like the general rule is when you're in the public, talk to everyone as if they're you know, they never went past fifth grade. So um, this is where I want to talk about a direct six-year entry program versus a four-year program. So the difference between the two, like I said, I didn't get, I didn't have to take the PCAT, which was, you know, a great perk. But once I was in this direct program, it was really cutthroat. Um, their whole goal was to weed you out. So you had to maintain that GPA. You had to do the best you can so that they didn't kick you out. Whereas if you take your PCAT, you know, you've already shown them you can do it. So once you're in, they make sure you stay in. They'll give you extra credit to make sure you don't fail. They'll do everything they can to make sure you make it to the end. Whereas where I did it, it was, um, we started off with, I think, 300-some people. and We ended up with 150. So it's, you know, you really have to make sure you're going to be in it for the long haul. So keep that in mind, too. So it's either you work now or you work later. There's no easy way out. Um, so what takes, oh, did I just do this? I did. All right. Um, study habits. So the, um, I'm sure in high school you study, but the way you study in high school is very different from the way you study in college. So you really have to find your study habits, you know, whether you study good alone, whether you study better in um, study groups, whether you need to go to a professor. And it's really time consuming. Studying is really what you're going to be doing a lot of. And um, pharmacy is a lot, it's not just memorization, it's a lot of understanding because it's a lot of application work. So a lot of the tests we took, it wasn't, what does this drug do? It was, how is this drug going to affect this, and what's the outcome going to be because of that? So it's a lot of understanding, application, analyzing. And then, again, I'm going to say this again, utilize your professors. Make sure you're asking for help. Even if you think you know the material, it's great to go to your professor and be like, hey, listen, is there another approach for me to do this? Because these professors, especially when you're actually in pharmacy school, are going to be your best friends, because when you're graduating, especially in this economy, they're going to be the ones that will help you get a job. They're going to be the ones, like I said, writing your recommendations. And a lot of them, they, um, you know, being a professor isn't their only job. They're doing research. They're working on all these projects. And to be pulled into those projects, it's great. It's a really good experience. So you want to make sure you build that relationship. It's, it's huge. Um, and then another thing is make bridges while you're in school. Don't burn them. So, I mean... 
the school I went to was a really small school, so it's almost like high school all over again. So I don't mean just your professors, but even your peers. Make sure you're nice to everyone, you're kind to everyone. Because these peers, when you graduate, they're going to be your colleagues. And again, they're going to be the ones that will, one day they could be your boss. And if you had burned that bridge, they're going to be like, I knew this person in college, and they're not the right person. So it's not just your professors. Make sure you're good with your peers, too, because they will help you later on in life. All right, so pharmacy school, it's not just books. So when it, you want to make sure you get involved um, with community events. So if you see, um, you know, there's like a, a di diabetes screening program, try to be involved in it because you get a lot of good experience from it. And same with school events. Do your MSA, do, your, do clubs, do sports because you're going to need that outlet. You know, studying isn't, you don't want studying to be your life. You're going to go insane if that's all you do. So Use these um, mediums to be your outlet for getting rid of all that stress. And like I said before, research with professors. I know at my school, every professor was a part of a project. You know, a lot of them, they're the ones who do the research to discover these drugs. So if you get pulled into that, like one of my friends, he was, um, all he had to do was, he was basically dissecting mice, nerve, their spines to figure out how the drug was working with it. It's such good experience. And, um, you know, you get your name published. I mean, how awesome is that? You get your name published in the, like those journals, and even even for just helping out. And then, um, again, I, I keep saying this, but the job, build the connections. It's good for your resume too. You wanna you wanna put as much as you can in your resumes. So this will be um, it'll look really good on your resumes if you do this stuff. And same thing with extracurricular activities, like I said. All right. So once you're done with pharmacy school, you can either keep going or you can stop there. I personally chose to stop there. Um, while I was in school, I, I was actually interning um, at Walgreens. And so I think like almost six months before I graduated, they already offered me a job. So that's another big reason why you should try to get a job while you're in school. Because when you graduate, if they like you, they'll hire you right on the spot. Like they, um, they offered me the job in November. I was graduating in May. So I didn't have to worry about going through the interview process or anything because they already knew me. So um, if that's what you want to do, that's great. But if you want to keep your school going, your schooling going, um, you have two options, like I said. You have residency. So residency, the first year is just, you know, general residency. You kind of, you work with the doctors. You work with the pharmacists in the hospital. And then you have, that's called a PGY-1. And then you have a PGY-2. This is if you want to specialize in something. So my last year of pharmacy school was all rotation. So I just did five weeks at a time at different places. And this is where specialization comes in. Um, I, one of my rotations was pediatric oncology. So if you want to specialize, you can do that, like go into something really narrow. Be, all you would deal with is peds and then, you know, the oncology medications, like chemo and all that. Or if you want to do cardiology, all you would focus on is cardiology. Residency, um, it's really competitive. It's really competitive. In the whole U.S., I think there's only, um, I think it's 2,000 spots, Okay and about 12,000 kids graduate a year. Now, now, not all of those people choose to do residency, but if you think about even half of it, that's 6,000 competing for 2,000 spots. So it's hard, it's competitive, but it is great experience. Um, I, I personally wish I had done it. Uh, if I could go back, I would try to do it. Uh, at this point, you know, I'm kind of set with Walgreens. But if you, realize, if you decide you don't like working in a hospital, you also have the option of doing a fellowship. A fellowship is more of the industry research type I I did um, I worked at a pharmaceutical company once over the summer uh, for one of my years and I absolutely hated it and so I decided research is not what I want to do I thought it was really boring but a lot of people like it they like doing the statistics they like doing you know um, the hands on stuff with that industry is the pharmaceutical sales kind of like getting those drugs out there if that's what you like a fellowship is for you um, it's again it's one to two years you can do one or two if you want to go further into it. All right, so some qualities you need to have to be a pharmacist. Now, obviously not everyone can do everything. Um, one of the main things is leadership qualities. No matter where you go, it's the same thing with, like, a doctor. Um, you're going to be you're gonna be the leader wherever you are. So I work, I work for Walgreens, so I'm the pharmacist. I have pharmacy technicians under me. So I have to constantly, you know, be making those leadership um, decisions where, you know, hey, you need to be here, you need to be doing this. So you have to be able to delegate and all that good stuff you have to have to have to be a people person whether you go into retail or hospital 
for anything. Um, if you're in retail, you're all you're constantly dealing with customers. If you're in the hospital, you're dealing with patients. You're dealing with doctors. You're going to be talking with them day in day out. Um, and you have to have a lot of tolerance and patience. You have to realize with these type of fields, these people are sick. They're on their lowest point, and they're gonna they're gonna yell at you for the dumbest things. And you just have to learn to take it and be patient with them. They're gonna they're gonna throw so much at you. You just have to sort of take it all in. And then you have to have a lot of confidence. I think this is with any job, no matter where you are. Just be confident in everything you're doing because um, these people are coming to you for help. If you act like you don't know what you're talking about, if you act like, you know, I don't know this, they're, you know, they're, they're not going to rely on you. They're, they're putting all their trust in you when it comes to their health. So try to be confident. <laughs> um, also, being proactive, like I was saying, go out, look for jobs, look for you know, shadowing, internships, those things to do. And be open-minded. There's so many fields out there. Um, you have to be open-minded with the types of patients you see. When I was in Philadelphia, I worked um, I worked for Walgreens over there, too, but I worked for a HIV-AIDS specialty clinic. And um, the type of the customer base we had was very different. And one of the main things that they kind of were looking for in someone that worked there was an open-minded, because you're going to see a lot of in interesting characters a lot of interesting characters so just kind of keep an open mind with the people you're dealing with then a lot of these qualities um, you build over time when I was in pharmacy school they make you practice this so much you have classes to practice this if you think you can't talk to people trust me they will make you talk to people they'll make you um, build those qualities um, so the future of pharmacy there's so many different fields out there I know I didn't even know these fields I thought it was just either what, CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens, or a hospital, but there's so much out there. So it's just a matter of finding what you want to do. There's the clinical, there's the research, um, there's retail, there's industry. You can, there's so much. I, like, I can't even, you know, begin to tell you. You just have to kind of, that's what rotations is for, trying to figure out what you want. And then, you, you know, you'll eventually find your niche. It is, a, like I was saying, it's a really competitive field, especially nowadays. Before I even started, they had such a big need for it, but now um, it's become such a popular field that there's a lot of people graduating, especially um, if you want to stay in within this area. Unfortunately, with like the tri-state, you know, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia, it's really saturated with pharmacy, with pharmacists because we have so many pharmacy schools around here. I mean, if you want to move out to like, you know, the Midwest in the middle of nowhere, they really need them there. So keep that in mind. It's competitive. Um, that's why you have to stand out. But once you get that job, it's a stable job. Because, you know, they'll always need pharmacists, so it'll still be there. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Okay. So when you said maintain at least a 3.5 mm -hmm. GPA, okay, so for, does it have, what if, like, for example, you took, like, engineering, okay, and, but you're still, like, on the pre-farm track? Like, Dr. Asma was saying, like, he said, like, if you, like, you do that, like, and, like, you got, like, a 3.1, they still accept you in medical school. But is that the same thing for pharmacy school? Yeah, I mean, a GP, you have to keep in mind, GP isn't the only thing they're going to look at. They're going to see what classes you took, because you send them your whole transcript. They're going to see what else you're involved in. I know when I was in pharmacy school, a lot of people did the PharmD plus an MBA. So if you do something like that, it will make you stand out. So, I, I mean, 3.5 isn't the cut number saying that you need to have this. But, it, you know, somewhere around that ballpark, it'd be really good to have just because it lets them know that you're doing well in what you're doing. Anything else? Uh, um, you said that when you get into a six-year program, you don't have to take the PCATs, but it's, like, if you go, want to go into med school and you go into, like, a Caribbean school, you don't have to take the MCATs, but... When you move back into the states, it's going to look really bad if you didn't take your MCATs. Is that the same for pharmacy? No, no. Pharmacy, what it is, um, the PCAT, they only use that to get into pharmacy school. So uh, the chance of me, obviously, you know, I got a job, but the chance of me getting a job versus everyone else is the same. The only difference is that even though you're not taking your PCAT, they know that um, you're going through, you're still going through the rigorous system of, keep, of staying in school. You have to maintain, I think for my school, you have to maintain a, a 2.7 in all your science classes. So all those fluff classes don't help you at all. So math and science, you have to keep, you have to maintain that B average. But is there a residency entrance exam for pharmacy? No, residency, um, what it, how it works is it's, it's, a, it's actually almost the same as med school where you have the matching system. 
you um, you go around looking for whatever program you want. You know, you apply to it. You, you apply to those before you even graduate. So during your rotations part. After you graduate from T school, you take something called a NAPLEX. I don't know if med med students have this or not. But for pharmacy, you have to take, it's like your board. You have to take your NAPLEX, and you can't start working as a pharmacy. You can't get your full license. Well, yeah, it's your licensure exam, I should say. You can't get your license until you take this NAPLEX. The NAPLEX has like a like a 93% passing rate. It's, it's honestly the easiest you'll take test you'll take after pharmacy school. So it's not something you need to worry about, and you just have to study. I studied like two weeks for it, and I, you know, I passed. You have to... You have to get a 75 or higher to, um, to pass. It's either pass or fail. They don't look at your, no matter where you get a job, they, they'll never look at your scores. Whereas I think in a med school, they look at your scores. Whereas pharmacy school, um, it's either you pass or you didn't pass. That's all they care about. Oh. Whichever. Okay. Sister, I think you had a typo. When you said six hours a day, did you mean six minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. No. It's, it's a lot of study. Six hours? A day? That's, the people study really hard. I don't know people who actually just took a year off just to study six hours. Yeah. One of my six techs six took hours. this exam six times, and like a humdullah after six times, she finally got into pharmacy school. Six hours? Yeah. Yes. In a day? It's a six hour exam. It's not easy. Yeah, like for, hours for, for two to three months? Every single day? All right, let's <laughs> <next question. laughs> Uh, during pharmacy school, like for medical school, there's the USLV step one and two. Is there anything during? No, pharmacy school doesn't have that. You just basically, pharmacy so school is just like, um, it's almost like going through college again. You just go take your classes, take your tests. You don't have any boards. The only standardized test you're going to take is that NAPLEX at the end of your school. Like that's after you graduate. And again, that's easy. So once you're done, you're pretty much cleared. Um, for pharmacy school, you can either take two years of prerequisites or you could go get your undergrad. Um, does it really make a difference for getting into um, Honestly, since I didn't take that track, I don't, I don't, I want to say it won't make that big of a difference, because I know um, one of our brothers at our mosque, he, did, he didn't have a major, he didn't graduate with a bachelor's, and alhamdulillah, he got into, you know, University, University of Maryland, by the way, is, I think, number four in pharmacy schools. So, if he, if he did all that and got into a really good school, I would have worry too much about that. They really care about you getting all your prerequisites done, and that just depends on what school you apply to, what they want. I have a question for the sisters. Yes. If one of the sisters decides to take the path for four-year undergrad, mm -hmm. which year they have, they should apply for a pharmacy school, and like, is there any recommendation for their undergrad years? Like? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't go over that. So, um, if you decide to do the four years undergrad, the, the best time to take your PCAT, I would say, is your sec after your sophomore year, so your third year, because at that point you would have taken all the classes. One thing I don't recommend is I know a lot of people have done is they're like, oh, I'll just study for the PCAT and take it without actually taking the courses at school, without taking organic chemistry, without taking chemistry. Um, that's not going to get you anywhere. So take it your junior year, so your third year, because then you would have had taken all your classes and you'll have a better understanding of everything that's going to be on the test. And then your after you take your PCAT, that's when you start applying for pharmacy school as well. And then fourth year is basically, or you could you could even apply fourth year too. It just depends on where you are with what you need. So either third or fourth year, I would pharmacy school as well. And then fourth year is basically, or you could you could even apply fourth year too. It just depends on where you are with what you need. So either third or fourth year, I would say. Yes. By the way, this it was a great lecture, sister. Thank but you. Uh, so, when it, you know, it's flexible, like for mm -hmm. a black pharmacy, like yeah, aren't there like, times where you have to take night shifts? See, it depends on what field you go into. Um, obviously, for Walgreens, you can you can do the night shift if you want. I, you know, I don't want to. I just do the, either the eight to four or the two to ten. Um, if you want to be if you want to be in the hospital, if you want to be with like the doctors, yeah, you you might be on call. But I want to say the majority of pharmacy field, you're not going to have that run around. Like, I know doctors have calls. They have, like, the 36 hours they have to be there, all that, you know, even while they're doing their rotations. Like, my rotation was literally 8 to 5. It was it was great, you know. Um, whereas, like, a, a, a doctor residency, they're always on the go. Pharmacy is a lot more relaxed than that. So, like... So, you don't. My answer is no. Okay. So, like, like you don't have to... Like, yeah. it, even if they unless, unless that's like a field you want to go into, if you want to take that path, you can, but it's, it's not something you have to do. 
Whereas, like, I know for medicine, um, if you don't do residency, your your options are really limited. You can pretty much only do research. But if you, a lot of times you kind of have to have your residency. Whereas pharmacy, you don't have to do your residency. I'd say half the people don't do residency. Half of them do. It's a great field for sisters, I have to say. It's, it's really good. Because um, I wanted to be a doctor at first, but then I, I felt like the lifestyle of a doctor is just not conducive to having a family, to having kids. Whereas a pharmacy, you know, if you're a pharmacist, I can work the two days a week and alhamdulillah make enough. You know, if, if God forbid something happened to your husband, you ha you know, you're able to, you know, um, provide for your family as well. You, you know, it's not, it's not as intense. So that's a big thing, too. I have another question for the sisters. So um, what do you recommend? Because I know, like, medical school has a very strong, and they insist so much on they have to have research, they have to have volunteering work, they have to have a year of clinical experience. Is there any strong recommendation from the farms? Is there any need for that? When they um, I'm assuming mostly the people who go to, through the four-year yeah. undergrad and they take the PCAPs. Actually, there isn't. Um, there's, yeah, it's as much as there is, in the, um, they push that in med school, there's not that much in pharmacy school at all. It's another good thing about it. Because um, the thing is, like, wh even when you're in pharmacy school, they give you a lot of experience then. And if you want to work at a hospital, they will, I mean, doing a residency will look great. It, they'll, they'll most likely, you know, they're a lot more likely to hire you versus, like, someone like me who had done a residency. But um, as far as getting into pharmacy school, it'll look really good on your resume, but that's not going to be what it comes down to. It's not going to, I personally don't think it'll make that big of a difference. Yeah. I have a question. Um, how do you recommend high school students or even college students to get a job um, as a tech or something if they're not licensed? Um, well, for a pharmacy technician, depending on where you are, like I know Walgreens, um, there's a pharmacy technician license, so like being certified, not a license, but being certified. Mm -hmm. Like Walgreens, I know they pay for it, so they'll give you classes to take and they'll pay for you getting certified. Um, as far as the hospital goes, I, some hospitals you don't need to be certified. A technician job is honestly like, if you want to work as a waitress, you know, you can work as a waitress. You just kind of apply for the job. The same thing with a technician. You don't need you don't need a large skill set to get into that job. So that's why, I mean, that's what I did while I was in school. I I became a technician, or like an intern technician first, and that's how I end up getting my job, and you really don't need any qualifications except for, you know, being a good worker. So there's something like, mm -hmm. you don't have to be certified? Um, nowadays, I know they're looking for it, but like I said, a lot of places will pay for you to get certified while you're on the job, so it's a good deal. You can take classes like an associate's um, at a community college, but yeah. I don't know how much it's worth it. Is that like a, the 140 hours of classes you have to take is for the pharmacy technician? Um, what do you mean? Like, it's, is how, many, how long are the classes? For a pharmacy technician? Yeah. Honestly, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Like, I know, like, my techs are taking the class. It's like, it's 10 days worth. And I, I don't know how many hours are each class. It's not hard. It's a lot of math, so be good at math. Uh, do you recommend going after, uh, going past Calc 1 or Calc 2? I think Calc 1 um, is It would help. Like, actually, in pharmacy school, all I took was Calc, and that was the end of it. But then we take a lot of, you have to know a lot of basic math, but you have to be able to manipulate a lot of that stuff. You don't need to know, like, I don't even remember anything from Calc, honestly. But it's a lot of um, conversions and that sort of thing. So if you were to take talc, uh, talc, calc two, I mean, good for you, but you're not really going to need that. Yeah. So like I said, it's math, but it's a lot of basic math until you get to the higher farm supply. One more question. Yeah, no, as many as you want. All right. So for qualities and tolerance, it's like, what if you're like, what, what if like they like, I, I mean like, do you really have to be that tolerant? I mean, you do. Um, <laughs> you do. The amount of stuff in retail from where I work, the amount of stuff we get thrown in our faces, the amount of times we get yelled at. Can you tell it us takes, story? No. Okay. It takes a lot of patience. Um, yes. Uh, if you don't decide to do a residency and you just like graduate four years and then you decide later on you want to do a residency, can you still do that? You can. You can. Um, the only thing with that is they'll look at why you have a big gap between you graduating and doing a residency. So make sure you have something 
you have filled in that you did. Then, and that at that point, you have to say, yeah, you know, um, after I graduated, I did this and this. And in residency, you know, obviously they have interviews and stuff, so you, you'll be able to, you know, give your little spiel then of why you have a big gap. It, be, it I know it becomes a little bit harder because. You know, you have kids coming straight out of school that are doing it, but it's definitely an option. What type of residency? I mean, you said that you wish you had done residency. Why um, you well, I, I personally, I went into retail, but I personally like the hospital a lot better. Mm -hmm. Just because, um, <laughs> like I said, with retail, you, you deal with a lot of angry customers. And um, whereas a hospital, you're just dealing with healthcare professionals. So you're going to be, even though you're going to be talking to nurses and doctors, they're a lot more cordial with you. <laughs> And um, a lot of the rotations I did, I did, like, rounds with the doctor. So if you decide you want to do residency, you're the type of pharmacist that's up on the floor. You're going to be doing the rounds with the doctors. I don't know if you guys know what a code is when someone's, you know, their heart stops, you know, and they do all that crazy stuff. You're you're in that room doing it with them. You're in that room giving them the drugs and stuff. So, but you can only do that if you have a residency nowadays. Before, um, okay. um, before that, uh you didn't have to have a residency, but now they're really looking for a residency. So you do have that upper hand if you have one. So pretty much doctors, I mean pharmacists that are working in hospitals have done residencies. Um, see, there's there's two types of far, hospital pharmacists. You can either be the staff pharmacist, which is like down in the basement, literally yes. putting the medications together, or you can be upstairs with the doctors who are giving the recommendations because. Uh, a lot when I did rotations, a lot of doctors will turn to you and be like, "Hey, what do I give? How much of this do I give? This person, you know, the kidney's not working. What do I do? What do I give?" And so you got to be able to be like this, this, and this, and you got to be able to do the calculations and you know go back to the books and and don't be afraid to look through books. Um, that's another thing. Don't ever be afraid to say I don't know. But yeah, so um, so it depends on what you want to do. If you want to be upstairs with the doctors, you need a residency. You absolutely need a residency. Probably like just a one year. Or um, one year is fine. Uh, two years is like if you want to be in the ICU ward, then you would need a specialization in that area. If you want to be like I did a pediatric, pediatric oncology, so the pharmacist I was under, she had done um, a second year in oncology for just kids. So you work just there, and that's highly like it's really narrow, like very specialized. Is it hard to get a job when it's so specialized? It's not. now. Right now it's not just because they're looking for that. They really want you to, because not a lot of people specialize. Like like I said, maybe what, let's, and this is a high number, 6,000 people, let's say 2,000 people are doing a residency a year, right? So that's all the spots there are. Um, not everyone's going to do it. I would say maybe only like 15, 20% actually go to the second second year. A lot of people don't because they just had enough. So, so it looks good. It's good. Yes. Um, is there a huge pay difference between working in the hospital? It's a really good question because yes, there is. It is. Um, there actually is. Uh, retail. I mean, I don't know if I should give. You want me to give amounts? Okay. So retail uh, usually pays about a uh, hundred twenty k, right? Whereas a hospital, you're not. I guess I'm assuming it's because you don't deal with as much stuff as you do in retail. But whereas a hospital, you start off at maybe seventy to eighty. So it's a huge pay difference. Um, that's why a lot of people go straight to retail after after school. But like obviously, if you do your residency, it increases your you know your um, your pay scale. And then after years, you do it does you know get higher. But retail is generally pays better than hospital does. What's the difference between the clinical and the research? So research is you're literally in a lab. You're literally in a lab. You know. I don't want to say looking under a microscope, but dealing with like the properties. Like, I don't know how many of you guys have taken chemistry, but doing the whole absorption and all that stuff. Whereas clinical is um, upstairs with the doctors. That's what clinical is referred to. So when you're doing the rounds and all that stuff. Uh, when you're doing research as a pharmacist, what's the difference between doing research as like a biology major or a chemistry major and and or doing research as a pharmacist? Um, yeah. See, if you like. That's a really good question. I don't know the exact answer to that, but a lot of it is you have a lot more knowledge about um, about the body system, about the disease state. Whereas for someone who has a chemistry major, they're not going to know if you have diabetes, what that entails. They're not going to know how what that means for your body. Same with biology, they're not going to know the chemistry side of, side of it. So as a pharmacist, as a pharmacist who's going to research, you're going to have you're going to be able to put all that together for them. Sisters who are in the Quran, 
Can you guys come, Sarah? Anything else? With respect to the you know, payment and all that, with respect to the retail and the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that um, maybe there is a more of the relaxation in hospital and sort of the uh, you know, job security in the hospital rather than being in the retail, it is more demanding. Um, I would almost say it's about the same. I know that um, if you're looking in a hospital, it's a lot harder to get a job in a hospital because there's only so many physicians, whereas retail, you know, as you see, there's like a pharmacy on every corner nowadays. I know, like, when, as I'm working for Walgreens, they, if, you know, if they don't need you at one store, there's always more stores opening. There's always a, retail, I feel like there's a bigger demand for it just because there's so many stores, whereas a hospital, there's only a limited a number of positions. I, I don't know about the like the job security part of it, just because I haven't worked in a hospital, and a lot of the friends I have just started in a hospital, so I'm not too sure about like you know the stability of one versus the other. But I would I would honestly probably say they're about the same because no matter where you are, they need pharmacists, and like I said, and particularly in this area, it's really saturated. Like if I wanted to look for a job at like University of Maryland, I know I could never get it because there's so many people coming out with you know, with residencies and stuff. But if I were to, um, I know if I were to go to, like, some boonie place in Pennsylvania, I'll be, I'd be able to like, get a hospital job just because they need that and they're not being picky. So it just depends on where you are. Your location's a big deal, too. If you have a residency, could you still work in retail? Mm hmm I would think that's such a big waste, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because retail, um, another thing you have to realize is the difference between retail and hospital, it's a whole different set of, Stuff you're dealing with so like the hospital medications you'll never see in retail the retail medications you you won't see as much in the hospital either like you know in a hospital you see IVs and all that stuff you know you're not going to be dispensing IVs at like your local Walgreens so it's the the types of stuff you see is very different so um, I just had a question about like the folks want to like actually synthesize the drug um, would they have to go through like uh, I guess a rigorous like Research programs and also uh, with their again being like a pay difference. Um, honestly, I'm not sure about the pay. What like um, the fellowship I was talking about? That's the path you would want to take if you want to, you know, like you said, synthesize drugs. Um, I, yeah, I have no idea about the pay, honestly. But there is a whole other path you can take for that. Like one of my rotations was going to be at like AstraZeneca, which is a big drug company. I, I, you know, I got switched because I absolutely did not like the industry. But if that was your choice, like um, from my school, we had eight rotations. So of those eight rotations, you could do up to like three, even if you wanted, in a research place. And you know, they probably pull you in. A lot of people get their jobs to get it through their rotations because they see how you've worked there because you're there for five weeks. So. That's what rotations are for to see what everything that's out there. Um, if you want to go into that, I would say you know do that. I don't know too much about that side of pharmacy, honestly. I can't really answer too much. But, but it's a, but that type of job is a very like you're just in your suit type of job. You know, it's not it's not hands on. You're going to be dealing with just um, it's more of sa not sales, but it's more of you're away from the public. I should say that. If you're not a, like a person who wants to deal with the public, that's great. Right. And um, a lot of that, there's a, another part of research is clinical trials. I'm sure you guys know, like when they make a drug, that's a huge, huge field to so, doing clinical trials, being a part of that, um, testing these drugs. Um, back to the aspect, um, would you uh, say that like this balance between lab work and like actual like retail and like, sale, like we are going back to like the Making the drugs when they have to deal more with like laboratory work and like actually like going out and like you know. It depends on like it depends on where in that field you're even going to. So if you're going to do the clinical trials, obviously you're going to be dealing with people. If you're going to be making the drugs. You're just going to be in a lab all day dealing with animals. So it's a big difference even there. Yeah, you test a lot of stuff on animals. So if you're not okay with that, don't go into that that part of it. Did I put you a stop to thinking again to in that direction? Because I don't know how many years ago that 
uh, usually when I ask my classmates, you know, that they didn't know uh, what subject they're going to go into. And uh, this is a very good presentation that, you know, uh, my brother and sister are getting their first hand as well as early starting yeah. the piece of, you know, qualified person in the world in the field. So, I'm just, if you would like me to say, you know, when this when I was right. time, you think that this time, it, uh, since you are much uh, younger than us, you know, <laughs> um, then you I'm decide sure. to go that direction. Honestly, I decided in high school what I wanted to do. Um, initially, I actually wanted to be a doctor, like I said. I would have loved to, but then I, you know, I realized, I kind of looked at what's around the doctor to what are my other options, because I said I didn't like the lifestyle of a doctor. So that's when I found pharmacy. I also had a lot of family members that are pharmacists too, so I, I saw the way they live, and I was like, hey, I want to I be like that too. Mm -hmm. So um, that was one of the things that pushed me, and then I love science. Uh, pharmacy, med, all this stuff, it's a lot of science. I, I mean, as a kid, one of my aunts had a pool, and I remember we used to take the dead frogs out of the pool, and we used to literally dissect them for fun. I mean, I love doing that stuff from the beginning, if, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. It's great. Um, I think high school is a really good time to decide, not exactly I want to do pharmacy, I want to do engineering, but to decide I don't like science, so I'm going to push all of that away. Um, I like math, so you know, it opens up a whole new door there. So I think, like I said, taking you know, AP classes for in whatever, or any classes really, high school and undergrad is a great chance to explore. It's your only chance to explore to see what's out there. So um, definitely start in high school. Start thinking about now because... Like, this is going to be your career for the rest of your life, and you want to make sure you actually like it. So, yeah. Don't put it off. Whatever you do, don't put it off. I asked this question last time, especially the financial aspect. You know, mm -hmm. how uh, did you did you get help? Did you get a scholarship? And I missed the first uh, of your presentation. Maybe you answered my question. I don't know. Yeah. But still, I asked this question last time from the so, uh, for me as a parent, we would like you know, to see what avenues we can take in order to sort of be self-sufficient and, you know, whether we should, you know, put some money on the support of the community, you know, they call it, and, yeah. or, you know, the way you did it, maybe it's personal, but it's still in general, you know, mm -hmm. uh, right now the student loans and all that yeah. is a factor. And, Right, and whatever the you know, the, the student should not think that this is an issue that uh, every time time changes, you know, and, uh, and there is nothing that should be an obstacle to go exactly. whatever they want, they can achieve, you know. But just no, that's a great on that, you know, how we should be proceeding in the next 10 years, you know, that how we can you know, go that way. That's a really good question. I didn't talk about it as far as the financial, how much it costs. Um, I personally, I went to a private school, so, you know, it was a six-year program, so it was, uh, it's going to be a lot more as if, um, opposed to if you were going to University of Maryland, which is, you know, a state school. My school costs about 30 a year, 30000 a year, which is, which is on the upper side, I would say. Um, but again, I didn't have to go through that undergrad, so if you look at it, I only had two years undergrad of thirty k, and then it went, you know, every year it accumulates, but there's so many scholarships out there, guys. Um, people are these companies. They're waiting for you to take it because they get they get a tax break on it. So they want to give scholarship. It's just a matter of you putting yourself out there to grab it. There's so many scholarships. My school itself, um, they gave us money too. Um, and another big thing is, it doesn't really have to do with pharmacy. You can do this with anything. Make frequent trips to your financial aid. I remember one time I just went out of nowhere. I just went. My mom told me to go, and I was like, fine, I'll go. And I went. and I said, listen, I need more aid. And he. The person who was in charge, he literally said, here's another $1,000 a year. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. Um, it accumulates. So all I had to do was go and ask and say, I need money. And they're, they're just willing to give it. So um, don't be afraid to do that. There's a lot of scholarships out there. And as far as the cost of going to pharmacy school, it depends on which pharmacy school you go to. If you go to a state school, it's going to be a lot cheaper as opposed to um, a private school. And it's the same thing with undergrad. If you go to a state school versus a private school, there's a huge difference. Um, my younger sister goes to College Park, and I think, I should know, but um, she's probably paying maybe 
Yeah, something like that. Eight to twelve a year. I paid thirty a year, so it's eight thousand. Yeah, eight thousand, and I'm I paid thirty thousand a year, so it's a big difference. Um, uh, as far as loans go, I know a lot of my friends came out with heavy loans from pharmacy school, like one hundred twenty to two hundred thousand loans. But like I said, um, for me, I graduated, and then I'm working in retail. Um, though I still have my parents that I'm living with right now, so a lot of my money is going to my loans. And if you make 120 a year, most people pay it off within a five-year span, five to ten-year span. So you're not going to be living with these loans. Um, and then if you go to somewhere like University of Maryland, you'll pay all those off even faster. So it's not, it's not. See, like the thing with med school is another difference. The thing with med school is. You kind of have to do residency. It's a three-year residency. Med school people who are doing residency, I think they make about what forty thousand a year. Yeah, forty. So it's the same thing with pharmacy residency. So you're not going to be making that much. Whereas pharmacy school, you do your four years, you're out, you're making one hundred twenty thousand, right? Right? You know, straight from the get-go, you don't have to do the residency. If you do a residency, it's only one year. Yeah, you're making the forty thousand as well, but it's only a year. So it's another perk. Is there a difference between? Um some classroom, uh, pharmacy schools have these satellite programs like in this area. Mm -hmm. How are those? Are those good? Are they I know, I know they just opened up one here. Um, Shady Grove. Yeah, Shady Grove. I don't know how it is just because they don't have any numbers yet. Um, see, the I know the way they rank pharmacy schools, a lot of it is by the percentage that pass the NAPLEX. And remember I said the NAPLEX is like, like stupidly easy, um, but you know, obviously not everyone does pass, so that's how they rank it. So I, I think most of this, I was actually just looking at that today before I came, most schools have an 80% passing rate, um, being the minimum. So most schools are like between 90 and 95 passing rate as far as graduating, I don't, not the graduating rate, but passing the NAPLEX rate. Graduating, graduating rate, I'm not sure about, it just depends from school to school. Oh, another thing. Um, if you guys, I don't know if you guys look at this, but there's some pharmacy schools which are three years and they go full year, you don't get your summers off. Do not do that. I don't recommend that because I've worked with people who have came from those schools and I just feel really bad for them because they're just not as well equipped as people who had done the whole four years. It's, I mean, it seems like you're getting it done in three years, but I don't know what it is. I, I did go to that school, but I just feel like people who are coming out of there aren't as better off as people who did a four year program. Um, they're like few of the people that I know that did that. They're having a lot of trouble getting a job, and they're just not doing as well. So it may seem like a quicker thing to do. Don't do it. That one year is definitely worth it. One extra year. Um, do you know any pharmacy programs that are like part time that you could go part time? Because I know like law school you can do part time, mm -hmm. like work and go to school. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm really not sure. The problem with what I, not problem, but the thing with what I did, since this was a six-year program, all of the people that were in my class, were, we all came from the same slate. You know, it was we didn't have any 30-year-olds in a class. We literally had all of us 18-year-olds. And the next year was all of us 19, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't have, you, like, technically, you could go to pharmacy school if you want when you're 30, when you're 40. You know, you can apply whenever you want if you're going to the four-year program. Since I did six-year, we were all on the same level. We're all the same age. So it was literally like going to high school all over again. Yes. How about being too young when we're doing? Like, do they care if you're too young? I don't think so. Because, like, for medical school, they have, like, an average of, like, 22. And, like, it's a huge difference. As long as, like, as long as you've got all your prerequisites and, you know, you, if you're a good candidate, it'll take you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They make you look better. Well, that's different for like the med school. Yeah, it's they have minimum age? Yeah, well, yeah they want it's a numbers game. So oh, it's, see, I didn't know that. It's not required, but like, they want you to be like a well rounded person. Yeah, see, pharmacy school is not like that at all. Like I said, it's all about your PCAT and about your GPA. Mainly your PCAT. Are we done with questions?
this. So I want to ask Sister Samina to, if she's uh, willing to give her email address as oh, yeah. to be her first contact for all of you if you have any other question. Or also in the future, if you decide to go in this track, I think she's going to be the best contact for you to yeah. better provide you with the tracks and also be a connection to get into school. Yeah, so. honestly, do not hesitate. Um, obviously, I've graduated. I know a lot of people, too. So if you want an internship, if you want anything, let me know, and I will try to hook you up, especially my own brothers and sisters, of course. So I, shall, I, will, I have your email address. I will share it with who. Wonderful. If you guys want her email address, email me. I will send off her email address, too. Those who have further questions. We want to thank Sister Samina for spending her time. She's a very oh, small girl from Wisconsin. Thank, 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 thank you so much for coming. Um, for sharing all your knowledge and information with us. And send her love, salawat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's nice to be sharing this.